Welcome to Refrigeration Training Ireland. Uh, today we just want to do a quick run through with a solenoid valve. So at this stage we realise the function of a solenoid valve is to enable pump down. So once this solenoid valve is de-energised, the refrigerant cannot go any further past the solenoid valve and continue on its way to the uh, evaporator. And therefore all the refrigerant would stop at the inlet to the, to the solenoid valve and back its way all the way back to the liquid receiver. So a solenoid valve consists of a coil. So this is an, an electric coil and again you can just take it off. So it has the magnetic coil or electric co coil which creates a magnetic field. Um, and you can remove the solenoid coil itself and then underneath you have what's known as the solenoid body. And you can see we have four screws here in the solenoid valve body. So I just want to disconnect the, um, I'm going to take apart the solenoid valve to show you the inside workings of the solenoid valve. The other thing that's very important to remember is if you're going to take this coil off the actual body of the valve itself or off the stem of itself, make sure that that is de-energized. Don't have electrical power going to your coil when you remove it from the valve stem. It'll burn out otherwise. Uh, some people would actually unscrew these four uh, screws here and plug it out. So again, I'll show you on my coil here. This is my sunlight valve. We have a coil, unscrew the four screws, plug it out, and by plugging it out you're de-energizing the sunlight valve. In our case we just don't have any power going to our system. So as soon as you unplug it then it is safe for you to remove the coil off the valve body. Okay. So body itself uh, four screws as we said this particular one has a star screw. I'm just going to take off these screws so uh, I'll be back to you in two minutes. Okay, so I've just removed the screws um, and basically before I take the, the, the assembly apart, the valve body apart, I just want to bring your attention to this arrow. arrow. This arrow indicates the direction of flow. So that's the direction in which the liquid is flowing. So in our case, we've got our liquid receiver, we've got our filter dryer, we've got our sight glass, we've got our solenoid valve. And the solenoid valve, the direction of flow is going towards the evaporator, up along into the evaporator coil itself. Inside this coil, just before the entrance to the evaporator, is the thermostatic expansion valve. It can be a thermostatic expansion valve or some other form of capillary device. In this case, it's a thermostatic expansion valve. But the key message that I'm trying to get across is that the arrow indicates direction of flow. So if I was going to fit this valve here, I would fit it with the arrow pointing towards the direction of flow, which is the direction in which we want the liquid to travel to. Other thing you will note, uh, the plastic seals on either side of the, the valve, the entrance and the exit of the valve. And again, there to prevent any dirt or moisture getting into the system. It's also important that if we were to do this on a live operating system, once we have the system pumped down, that we would have some kind of a dry cloth or whatever, just to remove any condensation so we don't deliberately introduce uh, moisture into our actual system. Obviously we back out the line afterwards but uh, that's another thing. Now literally just lift off the valve, the top of the valve body here. You can see our armature. So if I show you the armature first and foremost, this armature is just a spring-loaded armature. So what actually happens is that when there is no energy uh, on the actual coil itself, the armature is in the downward position and as soon as there's en energy on the coil, the armature is pulled up. So I'll just uh, energize this magnetic coil that we have here. So if I was to take that off here, put on my armature, or on, put it onto my valve body here, just to give you an idea. I have a switch here, so switch it on. Switch it on, see it pulls it up, pulls up the armature into the actual body itself. They de-energize and the armature, the spring will naturally allow the armature to uh, to, to return back to the reset position. Energize, de-energize. Okay, so that's how you can see how it operates. Okay, so rubber seal, you can see the rubber seal here. Make sure that that's nice and clean and be, be careful of that when you're putting it back together that you don't pinch it. Uh, this is the diaphragm here and at the moment because there's no refrigerant entering in that diaphragm is actually sitting in its position so refrigerant will come in here as long as the armature is uh, in the valve stem itself so in other words the magnetic coil is energized the, va the armature is pulled up into the actual stem itself the refrigerant then will be able to lift this diaphragm or force this diaphragm up and allow then refrigerant to enter into this little point here in the valve and continue on its way. As soon as the uh, coil, magnetic coil is de-energized, the armature will sit there on top of the diaphragm and the spring pressure will make will be higher than the actual refrigerant, the liquid refrigerant coming in. So therefore, this actual diaphragm isn't able to lift up or isn't able to be unseated. 
it'll stay stuck in position and the refrigerant can't go any further. So the refrigerant will actually stay at the entrance to the valve and back its way up along the liquid line as far as the liquid receiver. So de-energized means the armature stays in position and prevents any refrigerant from continuing its journey through the valve to the exit of the valve. Energized magnetic coil means that the armature is out of the way uh, it's pulled up inside into the stem itself, the body of the of the body, and that means then the refrigerant will be able to allow this diaphragm or push this diaphragm up sufficiently enough to allow refrigerant to continue from the entrance point into the exit point, which is located here, and on out through the pipework itself. So again, I'm going to see, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, if you look through the actual pipe itself, you will see the opening which allows the refrigerant to go through, and if I turn it around this side, you will see the entrance so you can see that the natural flow is to force the refrigerant in an upward motion so the refrigerant has to come up refrigerant has to rise up through this point here and then exit through this point here the diaphragm has to be able to be lifted by the refrigerant in order to allow the refrigerant to flow from the inlet to the outlet and if the diaphragm is if the armature is sitting on top of the diaphragm the diaphragm isn't able to lift therefore the refrigerant isn't able to flow Okay, just so you know then when we're putting it back together, just make sure that the uh, O-ring itself is clean and uh, you know, sometimes guys will put a little bit of, of oil around that just to help with the seal. But we put it back together, make sure our diaphragm is, is in position, you put it back together like so. Now, one of the things that I would always recommend that we do is you go put your screws in counterflow. So rather than having, so we're going to pinch our screws to make sure that we don't end up pinching the, the actual um, rubber seal itself I'm literally just putting in opposite so again it's like torquing it so for when, when you're sealing anything when you have any kind of thing but a gasket seal you would never uh, you'd never do one side first and then the other side because you run the risk of actually pinching the gasket or pinching the rubber seal so when I go to tighten this which you will see now in a few minutes you will see that I'm going to be counter uh, tightening each counter screw so literally if I started on this corner here I'm not going to go all the way home I'm just going to give it a enough of a pinch then I'll do the opposite the screw at the opposite side before um, and then on I, and this that side and this is to make sure that I'm getting a nice even the valve body is actually coming back together nice and evenly and reducing the actual risk of me pinching the rubber seal and uh, causing uh, uh, the body itself to start leaking okay and then obviously you can tighten as much as as, as, you, as you need to and as you say you put back on your coil and in our case if we had this unplugged at the time so that we don't want this coil to be energized we would put back in our, mag, our our plug and then we have our four screws which we put back into the actual job itself back into the coil itself so that's basically simple explanation of how a refrigeration solenoid valve operates i hope you found this video useful Check out our links be below to see for further videos coming along and uh, thank you for watching Refrigeration Training Ireland.